Welcome to Stephen Mendes Educational Videos. I'm Stephen Mendes and today we're talking about modulo N ripple counters. My students are having a little hard time seeing how these counters work, so I thought I'd make a video so that everybody will be enlightened. What we're looking at there now is a standard ripple counter. All of the J and K inputs are connected to logic 1, as you can see in the video. When you connect the J and K input to a logic 1 of a JK flip-flop, it puts the flip-flop into toggle mode. That means that every clock pulse causes a change in the output. That is a clock pulse, a complete clock pulse on the clock input will cause the flip-flop to either go high if it was low or low if it was high. So essentially, each flip-flop divides the input clock pulse by two. So this is exactly what we want for a counter that counts in binary. So this counter is going to count from 0 to 15 or from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. Now notice the way the clocks are connected. Each clock input gets its input from the flip-flop that precedes it. So as you can see, the actual clock is applied to the D flip-flop only and the C flip-flop gets its clock input from the D, and the B gets its input from the C, and the A gets its input from the B. So what you are looking at right now is a standard ripple counter. Without any modifications, it's going to count to its maximum value and reset. Now, these JK flip-flops also have a clear input. Uh, that's marked CL and the little circle on the outside tells us that an, a low, going from a high to a low, or an active low, is what is going to clear the flip-flop. So we have to keep the clear input high at all times. And when it goes low, it will reset the output to zero. So what would happen if we connect them all together? Well, if we connect all the clear inputs of all the flip-flops together, and we put a low onto the red line mark clear, then the counter will go back to zero instantly. And this is the basis of the modulo N ripple counter. We are going to reset these ripple counters using the decode and clear method, which means we will first decode the binary to a specific number and then apply that to the clear so that the ripple counter will reset. And when we can do this, we can make it reset on any number. We'd like you to like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Why? Because this will encourage me to go on making more of them. So if you find them helpful, please be sure to do those two things uh, to ensure that we continue. Also, you might like to visit my website, smendez.com, for other cool stuff or to learn more about my interesting life. Okay, so here now we have two identical counters. And all we're going to do is to add the decode feature so that these counters reset at a different count. Now we have added a NAND gate there 
which takes its input from the C output and the A output. So when the count reaches 10, or 1, 0, 1, 0, that output gate will go from a 1 to a 0. So as the count reaches 10, as shown in the orange, our output, which is going to the clear line, will produce the required low to reset the counter. Now, if the counter resets at 10, then it actually means that it counts from 0 to 9. So if we want to make a counter that counts from 0 to 9, then we have to reset it at 10. Now, let us take a look at the other one on the right. This time, we have taken three of the outputs. We have taken the A, the B, and the D. So, this is going to mean that this counter resets when the count reaches to 1, 1, 0, 1, which is 13. So, our counter is going to count from 0 to 12 and reset on 13. So, that's all it is. Now, you have the secret of the modulo n ripple counters, and you can make them count to any number that you choose. And it should be relatively easy to apply what you have learnt in this video to counters that use either three, four, five, or more flip-flops, because the principle is the same. Thank you for watching the Stephen Mendes channel, and we'll see you in the next video.